In this Blender tutorial, I'll show you how to create this procedural bronze material. And after we create the procedural material, I'll show you how to join the material together into this custom node group. So the custom node group has some different values to control the material. So we have the overall size of the entire material. Then we also have this metallic value if you don't want to have it be metallic. Then we also have the metal color, so you can make it a bit more yellow if you want to, or a bit more red. You could also change the brightness or you can make it more and less saturated. I like this kind of color here, kind of like a reddish orangey color for the bronze. Then we also have this dirt color. So this is a little bit hard to see right now, but you can change that dirt color. Now there's also a metal dirt amount. So if you turn this value up, you'll be able to see more of that dirt color, and then you can also change the dirt color. So this is kind of nice for making the material look a bit more dark or a bit more dirty. Then we also have the detail value of the material. Then we also have this lacinarity value. And the lacinarity is kind of going to add some little dots to the texture. So if I turn up this lacinarity, you can kind of see how there's more dots there. Or if you turn the lacinarity down, it looks more blobby. Then there's also the roughness of the metal. So you can make the metal really shiny or you can make it more rough. And then we also have the bump strength if you want to make it look much more rough and bumpy. And if you'd like to purchase this procedural material and help support the channel, you can get that on my gum store and my patreon page the links are in the description you can also check out my ultimate blender procedural material pack if you'd like to purchase all of my procedural materials and my ultimate procedural material pack has all of my procedural materials pre-set up for blender's asset browser with custom thumbnails sorted catalogs and customizable node groups you can also purchase my procedural material packs, which are packs of 10 procedural materials. And you can also learn how to create all of my procedural materials by checking out my Blender procedural material tutorial playlist. Now, just one more thing before we jump into the video. I want to let you know about my newly released tutorial course, my sci-fi construction robot tutorial series. So it's an 11 part tutorial series where I show you how to create this animation here of this rigged construction robot. So the course covers the complete process including modeling, materials, rigging, and animation to create this robot character. So if you'd like to check out the course then you can find it with the product links in the description. Alright so real quick I'll show you my 3D setup if you want to set up the blend file the same way that I have. So I went to the add menu and I went here to mesh and just added an icosphere and then right behind me as soon as you add the icosphere you can open up the add icosphere settings here and I turned these subdivisions up to 6 so that it was nice and smooth and then I I close those settings and I use the object context menu to shade the object smooth and then when modeling to the real life scale in Blender the default objects are quite large so I'm going to scale this object down by 0.2 hit enter and I can press Control a and then apply the scale so this is the object's new default size now I also added this really cool lion statue 3d model and this is a free 3d model from sketchfab licensed as creative Commons zero so if you'd like to use this lion statue I'll have the links in the description to where you can download this model on Sketchfab. So I downloaded the OBJ file and then once you download the model from Sketchfab you can click on file, you can click on import, and then you can import wavefront Dot obj and then once you add the model you'll have to scale the model way down because it is kind of large and then I pressed control a and applied the scale so that the material size would be correct and then also I added a subdivision surface modifier to the object just to give it a bit more detail and to kind of smooth out the edges then I also added a camera and I just pointed the camera at the objects and then I will hold down the Z button and move my mouse up into the rendered view to see this in the rendered mode so for the lighting I added these two area lights right here so I added one big area Area light in the back and this area light has a kind of a yellowish color and I turned the power to 100 and then this other area light is kind of on the top going down and for this color it's pretty much just a white color but it's slightly yellow and I turned the power to 500 and then also to get some nice realistic lighting and reflections I added in this aerodynamics workshop 1k HDRI this is a free HDRI from polyhaven.com link will be in the description if you'd like to download it and I downloaded the 1k version and the HDR version. So when you download the HDRI, you can click on the yellow dot here next to color. You can choose environment texture and then just click on the open button and open up the HDRI. 
And then just a few more settings. If I go up here to the render properties, I'm using the cycles rendering engine, but you could also use Eevee if you want to. And then also if you open up the film tab right here, I turned on the transparent background. And then also if you open up the color management right down here, I'm using the view transform of filmic and I changed the look to high contrast just to make the colors look a bit more contrasty and saturated. All right, so I'm in the shading workspace. So I have the 3D viewport right over here and I'm gonna go into the rendered viewport mode. And then I have the shader editor right over here. So I'll click on the objects. We'll click on new material and I can just rename this to bronze. And then you can also add the same bronze material to the other object. So I'm also gonna be using the Node Wrangler add-on to preview the different nodes. So if you don't have the Node Wrangler enabled, you can click on edit, you can go to the preferences, and in Blender's user preferences, if you go to add-ons, you can go here to the search, and you can search for Node Wrangler, and just enable the Node Wrangler add-on, and I'll show you how to use it in the video. So let's close Blender's user preferences. So for the base texture, I'm gonna to go to the add menu, and I'm gonna search for a Voronoi texture. Let's drop the Voronoi here, and with the Voronoi texture selected, I'll press Control T, and that is using the feature of the Node Wrangler add-on, and it's gonna add the texture coordinate and mapping. Now, I want to use the object coordinates because the object coordinates are going to place the procedural textures on the objects more evenly. So let's put the object into the vector. And then I can control shift and select the Voronoi texture to preview it. And let's change some of the settings. So on this value right here, this distance metric, I want to change this to the Chebyshev. And then let's turn the scale up. So I'll turn the scale up to like a 20. I want to make it very detailed. So I'll turn the detail to the max of 15. And this roughness here, I'm going to turn it down a little bit to like a 0.45. And this lacinarity value, I'm gonna turn that up to like a three, so just turn it up a little bit. You can see that lacinarity value is kind of gonna break up the texture and add some cool little dots and kind of speckles to the texture. Now I wanna mix the Voronoi with a noise texture just to add some more noise. So I'll go to the add menu and I'm gonna search for a noise texture. Let's drop the noise texture right down here. And then I wanna use the same object coordinates. So let's put the mapping into the vector, the noise texture and I can control shift and select the noise texture to preview it. Let's change some of the settings of the noise texture. So I want to turn the scale to 40 so I can see that better. Let's also make it really detailed. So I'll turn the detail to the max of 15. And we can also turn the roughness up to make it a bit more detailed. So I'll turn the roughness up to like a 0.65. And this lacinarity, I also want to turn this up just a little bit. So I'll turn it up to three. So to keep my nodes really nicely organized, I'm going to click and drag to box select these nodes here and I'll press Control J to join them together into a frame. The frames are totally optional, but I just like to use them to keep my nodes nicely organized. So I can drag the frame around and it will move the nodes. I can also select the frame and then press F2 to add a label, and I'm gonna call this mapping. All right, so now I wanna mix the Voronoi and the noise texture together. So to mix the two colors of the textures together, I can go to the Add menu, and I'm gonna search for a mix color. Let's add the mix color node and drop this here. And the Voronoi distance, that's gonna go into color B. And I can control shift and select the mix to preview it. And then the noise texture factor, that is gonna go into color A. Now the factor, this is gonna blend between only using one of the textures or only the other. So you can see we're only using the noise at zero and we're only using the Voronoi at one. So I wanna change the factor to a 0.27. So that's kind of a nice mix in between them. So I can click and drag to box select these nodes. I'll press Control J to join them together into a frame just to keep them nicely organized. And I can press F2 to add a label, and I'm gonna call this textures. So now I wanna add these textures into the base color. So let's take the result, and I can put that into the base color, and I can Control Shift and select the principled shader. Now that doesn't really look like bronze, so I wanna change the colors. Before I change the colors though, I do wanna make the texture more contrasty. So I'll go to the add menu and let's go to the search and I'm gonna search for a color ramp and we'll put the color ramp in between the mix and the principled shader. So if I drag the black tab over, you can see now everything is gonna be more contrasty. So I'll drag the black tab over there. So you can see these little dark areas, that's where the dirt is gonna be. So we can make the bronze material look more dirty if we want to. So now let's make the colors. So to make the colors be customizable, I can go to the add menu and we can search for the mix color and we'll put the mix color after the color ramp. 
Now the color ramp here, this can go into the factor. And so now instead of using a single factor slider, the black and white values of this texture are gonna determine what parts will be color A and what parts will be color B. So for color A here, I want this to be the bronze color. So I'm gonna make it kind of like an orangey yellow color. And then for color B, this is gonna be the dirt color. And so I made this very dark and also made it kind of an orange color. And if you want to use the same exact colors that I'm using, you can click on the colors and go to the hex values. And for the bronze color, you can punch in a hex value of C1704B. And then here for color B, you can go to the hex value and you can punch in 160D09. So let's control shift and select the principled shader that's using the feature of the node wrangler to control shift and select different nodes. And we can now preview that material. So it still doesn't look like bronze, and that's because it isn't metallic. So let's turn the metallic value all the way up to 1, and now it is acting like metal. Now, to make it look even more like bronze, I'm going to turn this roughness value way down, and so now it looks like a really shiny metal. Now, later on in the custom node group, I want to be able to control how much dirt there is. And so I want to be able to control this slider here to make it like more contrasty and be able to see more of the dirt. So to do this, I can go to the Add menu, and I'm going to search for a hue saturation value. And we'll put the hue saturation value in between the color ramp and the mix color. So the hue saturation value has this value to make the colors lighter or darker. So we can use that later in the custom node group to make the bronze material more dirty. So let's click and drag to box select all these nodes. I'll press Ctrl J to join it together into a frame. If I select the frame and press F2, I can just rename this to like base color. Now I also want to add some variation in the roughness so that some parts are more rough and other parts are more shiny. So let's take this mix color and I can put that into the roughness. Now to control that better, I want to go to the add menu and I'm going to search for a color ramp. And let's put the color ramp here in the wire between the mix and the roughness. So stick it here. I'll just drag it down. So if the values are lighter, it's going to be more rough. But if the values are darker, they're going to be more shiny. You can see if this white tab is all the way dark, it's super reflective and it looks like a mirror. So for the white tab here, I'm going to make this kind of just like a mid-gray color. And then for the dark color here, I'm going to drag this out a little bit so it's a little bit more sharp. And then this black color, I'll make it just a little bit brighter. And the hex values that I'll be using for this color ramp, if I go here to this darker gray, this is going to be a hex value of 3A. 3a, 3a, and this lighter color here, this light gray, this will be a hex value of b9, b9, b9. Now again, later in the tutorial, when we create the custom node group, I wanna be able to control the roughness. So if we make the values lighter or darker, that's gonna control the roughness. So I can again search for a hue saturation value node, and let's put that here after the color ramp. So now this value is gonna make the texture lighter and darker so that can easily control the roughness. So let's click and drag to box select these nodes and I'll join them together into a frame and I'll add a label and I'll just call this roughness because these nodes are controlling the roughness. And then finally, I wanna add just a tiny little bit of surface bump. So if I zoom in here close to the material, I just wanna add a tiny little bit of bump on the surface. So what I can do is take this mix result and I can put this into the normal of the shader. Now you can see there's some weird shading issues and it looks all messed up and weird. And that is because we need to convert the color data into normal data that the shader can use. So I'll go to the add menu and we're gonna search for the bump node. And we're gonna put the bump node here in between the mix and the normal. So stick it here and I can drag the bump down. And then to actually convert it to bump data, we want the mix result to be going into the height value of the bump. So now you can see the bronze looks really rough. It kind of looks like a really rough battered metal. And so to make that less strong, I can turn the strength value way down and I'll turn it down to like 8.03. So now if you zoom in really close, you can see there's just a subtle little bump on the surface. It is pretty subtle, but you can kind of see it right there if you control shift and select the bump. And so that's just gonna add like a subtle bump over the material. So that is it for the procedural bronze material, but I'll now show you how to join this together into a custom node group so it's easier to use and to change the values. So let's click and drag to box select all the nodes except the material output and you can press Control G that'll join it together into a node group. Now if you have the node group selected you can hit the tab key to go in and out of the node group. 
So I'll drag the node group over here. Let's drag it out to make it bigger. And I can just rename it to bronze. And then I will hit the tab key to go into the node group. So I'll press the N key to open up the side panel here. And on this interface, if you click here on group, I want to double click on the interface and I'll rename that to shader. So outside of the node group, you can see it now says shader. So I'll go back into the node group. Now let's go over here to this group input and we can plug values up to the group input and then that way we'll be able to control those values outside of the node group. So I first want to be able to control the overall scale of the material. So this mapping node here is plugged up to all the textures. So this scale can change the size of the entire material. So let's put the scale into the extra socket there. And then to make it one value instead of three values, I want to click here on the scale and we're going to click on the type here and we're going to change it to float so it is one value. And then this default value, we need to change this to one and then if we hit tab to go out of the node group we need to turn the scale back to one so now let's go into the node group now I also want to control the metallic, so let's drag the group input right over here, and we can take the metallic value and put that into the extra socket. And then I also want to be able to control the colors, so let's put A into the extra socket there, and then also B, put that into the extra socket there. And I can double click on these to rename them, and I want to rename this one to metal color, and this one here, I'll rename this to dirt color. Then I want to control the amount of dirt. So this value here, if I drag this, it's going to make more dirt or less dirt. So let's put the value into the extra socket here. And I can click on this and just rename it to dirt amount. Then I want to be able to control the detail and lacinarity, so I'll drag the group input back down here, and let's put the detail of both of these textures into the same socket. So we'll put the detail in there, and then also the detail of this one, we'll put that in there. So now this detail is being plugged up to both textures, so this detail will control both detail levels of both textures at once. And we'll do the same thing for the lacinarity, so put the lacinarity into the extra socket, and the lacinarity here into the extra socket. And then I want to be able to control the roughness of the material. Material. So we have this hue saturation value which can make it lighter or darker. So let's plug the value into the extra socket here. I can double click on this and I'll rename it to roughness. And then I want to also be able to control the bump strength. So let's drag the group input right down here and we'll put the strength into the extra socket. I can double click on this to rename it and I'll rename it to bump strength. All right, let's click on the group input and I'll just drag it here kind of behind the material. I'll hit the N key to close the side panel and I'll hit the tab key to go outside of the node group. So we have the overall scale to change the size of the texture. So you can change this depending on the size of your object. You can also change the metallic value if you want to make it less metallic. Then you can also change the metal color. So you could make it kind of less saturated or more saturated. You can make it more yellow or more of a red color. Then we also have the dirt color. So you can just change that dirt. We also have this dirt amount if you want to be a bit more dirty and kind of look a bit darker. We also have the detail of the metal and the lacinarity of the metal. We also have the roughness value. So you can make the metal really shiny or you can make it more rough. And then we also have the bump strength to change that surface bump. So that's going to wrap it up for this tutorial. So I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you found it helpful and thank you for watching. And if you'd like to purchase this procedural material, you can get that on my Gumroad store and Patreon page. You can also purchase all of my materials by checking out my Ultimate Blender procedural material pack. And you can also learn how to create any of my procedural materials by checking out my Blender procedural material tutorial playlist here on YouTube. All the links are in the description. And then I did mention this at the beginning of the tutorial, but I wanted to let you know about my new course, which I've recently released, my sci-fi construction robot. So in the course, we go through the entire creation process of creating this robot animation. So we do the modeling and the rigging and the lighting and the materials and the animation. And we create this exact robot animation in the course. So if that's something you're interested in, then definitely check out the course trailer with the links in the description, and you can find the course product pages in the description. But I hope you found this video helpful, and thank you for watching.